G.I. Joe. What's wrong, G.I. Joe? I'm a computer, kids. Stop all the downloading. <laughs> it hurts my brains. All right. Let's you intro this one. Intro what? The show. <sighs> <laughs> okay, I'll intro the show. No, I'll do it. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of One Upsmanship. I am one of your hosts, Adam Ganser. I am one of your hosts, Michael Swaim. Yeah, you are. Look at you, hosting mm-hmm. with me together. Mm-hmm. And we have our special guest today, returning for a, th- a number of times now. <laughs> Depends which episode Depends they're in which one order. Today. But yeah. it, it'll be number three, I think. It could be two or three. Hi, yeah. it's Vanessa Graydon. Yeah, we are stoked to have you back, because we're going to talk you. about, I mean, one of the best games of all time, Frankly, maybe. Frankly, we're going to get our grit on. We really are. <laughs> it's, in, it's in my top five. Yeah, it's in a lot of people's top five, in fact. But this game is Red Dead Redemption. You know that. You clicked on the title. You Apologize saw. Apologize to my donkey <laughs> and so on. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's get right into it. We'll pass that first checkpoint. Mm. Who wants to do the speed run? I'll Michael. do the speed run. Oh, you're gonna do it again? I love it. Uh, just yeah, because I we had... usually give the guests the prerogative. I think she, I think we're getting into favorite guest territory yeah. now. Just takes on the speed run voluntarily. I do you want to do speedrun. all the rants and the game yeah, on section? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take this one off. Yeah. Well, I'd love to do the raids because I brought my journal that I kept when I played the game of every single glitch that I found. It's a beautiful journal so as well. Good well, we'll get into this. that. I can't wait. But for now, there's no time to lose because the clock is ticking. Yep. All right. You play John Marston and you have a family and kids because you used to be an outlaw, but you're not now. But you can't escape that life because now you have to snitch on everyone you've ever worked with if you ever want to see your family again, which is really not unlike what the FBI would actually do to you now. So uh, you basically go and you try to take down Williamson and his old men and then you are shot and left for dead like a lot of games that I do speed runs for. Uh, And then you're rescued by a rancher uh, and then you eventually start doing some favors for that rancher because you're a nice guy now uh eventually you team up with an arms dealer named irish a grave robber named seth and a con artist with the most i'm a con artist name in the universe nigel west dickens uh (laughs) eventually you defeat the old gang but williamson flees and finds help from another dude that you worked with down mexico way uh and then a lot of telenovela betrayal happens a lot of telenovela betrayal that i cannot remember the actual intricacies of mentirosa (laughs) a lot of mentirosos and and (laughs) And double crossing lovers. Uh, eventually, Williamson is arrested and executed, and you get to go home and see your family. And then another twist the agent you've been working with ambushes you. And what looks like it's going to be a great finale where you get to spend the rest of your life with your wife and kids ends with you getting shot in the dome by the agent you've been working for three years past. Your son gets revenge in a duel with the agent, and then you find out that everyone you ever worked with and liked eventually dies or becomes corrupt. The end. Ding, ding, ding. That, that is right. Although, yep. the uh, the sense you eventually find out that everyone you care about will die eventually, that really just goes for anything, in yeah. any situation. It's more just the epitaph to humanity. True, but like they they went out of their way to tell you. Like Nobody ever says, like, Mario grew up to be an alcoholic, Many but died. they like tell you that in this. I mean, but you don't need to be told that. Look where he always shows up. Look at Bob Hoskins. I think we can (laughs) call that one. R.I.P. Bobby Haas. What maybe should also be added for the sake of anybody who somehow doesn't know what Red Dead Redemption is, this is a rock star game, most famous for Grand Grand Theft Theft Auto. Auto. And it's a sequel to Red Dead Revolver. Yes. It has nothing to do with gun, which was a failed attempt to rip off this franchise and launch a second franchise. That's fantastic. I think it received something like a 93 on Metacritic at the time. Cool. And... IGN just released a top 100 game of all time list. It's number nine, I believe. Number nine? Which is pretty high. Number nine? For a game... (laughs) Wow. Checkpoint! (laughs) Time for rants. Maybe I should be hosting this podcast more. (laughs) I... See, what's funny is I have a reputation for interrupting, which is earned. I do. And it's not because... It's not a respect matter. It's because I get too excited. Yeah. And I'm always fighting it. Yeah. I have to actively suppress mm -hmm. it. Like that. Oh, please don't. The guests like should interrupt the most. But <laughs> the reality is, I'm actually a lazy man at heart. So if you want to just carry the episode, Adam, I will shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Feels like a dare. Uh, 
No, I'm not going to do that on Red Dead Redemption. Why That's would I do true. That? That's this is a great game. Well, if I'm true to the Western hero, I should be very taciturn and quiet. Mm. I don't have a lot to talk about, Miss Bonnie. Although I would argue John Marston is one of the more chatty <laughs> He's pretty yeah. Western chatty heroes for a Clint Eastwood like knockoff. If, if you don't skip all those uh, stagecoach rides, you learn quite a bit of griping yeah. out of yeah. John Marsden. Yeah, yeah, he's really the Andy Rooney of the West. <laughs> <laughs> Just riding around going like, you know, 10 years ago. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Um, you want me to go first? On the rants? Yeah, yeah. we're into the rants. Okay, so, uh, didn't you go first for New Vegas? Went you went New last. Vegas. I went last. We went around the horn this way? Mm-hmm. Okay. So we go back the other so way? So go the other way. Well, yeah. Serpentine. 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 Uh, I have played through this game four or five times, which is, I think, a lot for any game that doesn't have that much story. Because this game doesn't have that much story. Vanessa really covered all the beats. She covered all the beats <laughs> That's of it. everything yeah. that happens. Uh, I have never had an, a gameplay experience with an open world game that I liked better than this. This is the best of that genre of game that I've played. Uh, over time, I grew to think the characters were more complex and interesting than other than Grand Theft Auto has ever offered. Mm-hmm. My initial reaction was they were a little more underwhelming than some Grand Theft Auto characters, but the more times I play it, the more I think that's not true. Um, this goes to show me at least that I don't need the mean spiritedness of Grand Theft Auto in the open world thing. Like that there is a there is a room for a more sort of morally gray, but it's not a mean spirited morally mm-hmm. gray tale. Because this was spot on emotionally every single step of the way. Even when you're shooting out 300 guys in a you know in some fortress somewhere, which you inevitably do because it's a Grand Theft Auto, uh, it doesn't ever feel like, my God, what a fucking monster you are. It's like mm. this is what you have to do. You know, like it, it's really cool, and it also is one of the best games ever at doing gameplay things that make you feel uncomfortable. Uh, to teach you, to give you emotional feelings that it will later supplant. Yeah. Specifically, there's two or three segments of this game where things are just kind of not advancing very much. You're just doing chores. And you're like, why the fuck am I just doing chores? I feel restless. That's in, that's on purpose. It's really hard to do that in a game, and they did it really well. Yeah. Love that. Okay, wait. If that's the end of your rant, which it yeah. looks like from your body language, yes. I just have to beg you Is to it explain. the smoking of the pipe that I... <laughs> no, you have to explain... Uh, cause Vanessa, you immediately keyed into it and yeah, but I don't know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. How is it, or do you want to save it for game on? But like yeah. what, what part of the game supplants that feeling of restlessness in an impactful way? When, when did you feel that? When the, the other shoe the, drops? Well, when he, like when you're doing chores at your homestead and then suddenly the government comes and hunts you down. You mean the beginning when you're doing No, that's your the end, too. Oh, and the end. I see, I see. Yeah, okay. there's yeah. a lot of parts where it's like, you're doing chores, but it's because we want you to fall in love with this character, well, so then you I thought you were arguing choice. that the bread and the butter of the game quest felt like chores or busy work. I was just trying no, to nail it that it down. No, it wasn't quite as dry and fetch questy as Grand Theft Auto tends to be mm-hmm. when you start mm-hmm. out. Yeah, And they fixed that a little bit in Grand Theft Auto V. Like, all the main plot stories are a lot more cinematic with twists and turns except for casing the goddamn poor i hated that right no no I, the poor authority is awful <laughs> like, let's not defend it this is still a grand theft auto game and it's still the old style where like there's gonna be like it not every beat of it's gonna be narrative and i think that that will not be true of the upcoming game that's coming mm-hmm. out but best there is of this genre of game all right vanessa rant uh i've got it I feel like my rant doesn't even really apply because I think it's a nearly perfect game other than the fact that I'm on a horse for a really long time. Uh, there's a there's a lot of space in between where I want to go and how I have to get there, True. which is my biggest rant about it. The thing is, the rant that I have is I am so tired of games that I love being put out too early before everything's worked out and I have mm. to hash through it. Because when Red Dead first came out, it is still the glitchiest game I've ever played. Whoa, really? Uh, like, like even now with a lot of like the PlayStation DLCs that are available, they haven't really updated them because they're working on another one. So it makes it to, it gets to a point where it's unplayable. And while they did a lot of great updates on Red Dead where it's still one of the best games I've ever played, out the gate, it is the glitchiest game I've ever put my hands on. Wow. Uh, more be, than a Fallout or an, or an Elder Scrolls? More than a Fallout. More than, yeah, a Fallout more than an Elder Scrolls. Like, if you actually look online, there are people that have made spreadsheets 
of glitches when the game first came out where you cannot proceed with the game or where you can't collect on a mission or where a mission will start but it won't give you the tools you need to complete it and that was it was rampant with it on its way like wow. as soon because I, I played it as soon as it came out i remember news stories about it yeah as now that you mentioned it I at the time it is the, well, the glitchiest game i do remember I the ever buzz touched. being this shit is so glitchy yeah, yeah. Wow. like there was so many because it they they also had some really fun glitches, which I have written down. Great. Uh, but there was also a lot of glitches that made me not be able to continue with a game that I really loved. And when I got it, uh, I I got it because I needed something to take the time off of the fact that I had an impending divorce. So I wrote down in a journal every single glitch that I found to pass the time. In your marriage, I'm, you mean I'm all the glitches your... you found? I mean both. Oh, this, okay. the, the first <laughs> half... The first half of this is all of the reasons I shouldn't have gotten married, and then the other half are weird... Sh- shit that happened in Red Dead. My Red God, Dead. I want to hear them both. <laughs> yeah. I'm interested in both of those lists. The I have two pages uh, that have NPC errors and gameplay errors, and some of them are just irritating, but all of the ones I wrote down were the ones that are almost fun to find. Oh, yeah. Uh, like uh, a snake man where it was an npc man that loaded as a snake with the behaviors of a snake he was coiled like a snake (laughs) like the man was actually coiled like a snake and he had these crazy bug eyes and he'd hiss at you and attack you like a snake but it was a guy in a white button up and a mustache guy polygons (laughs) they're guy polygons it's like, like a Lars von Trier film like, or you something. Can, you can find videos of people finding Snake Man. I found Snake Man twice and it's horrible. Like I look <laughs> at him through my scope and he just had these terrifying bug eyes. And I did it. Like I wrote down in the book, a Snake Man popped up today in my scope. I do not wish to speak with him. Oh God, he hisses. Uh, and <laughs> he'll kill if, him or run away. If you caught him, him by the, the head. If you caught him by the tail, he would have blessed you. He would have blessed <laughs> me. But the thing is, sometimes you can't even kill these weird glitches. So right. the first time I shot him in the head, the second time he just kept hissing at me. Uh, and then Donkey Lady, who uh, is a is an NPC woman that loads as a donkey, and you can ride her. Great. Is she uh, on all fours? No, she's standing. So you just like it almost looks so like a weird totem on top pole. Of her head? Yeah. You, you like perch around her waist, but it like glitches to where like your butt is halfway is into her halfway torso. In her torso. Yeah. yeah. And she runs and she like walks a donkey. Upright and you travel with yeah. her. And you travel <laughs> with her. Does he say all the things? Get out! Yeah. All of all the that? donkey things. Like wow. he responds to it like a donkey, but it loads as a woman. See. Playing a male character who rides a woman with spurs and That's yells, really yeah, yeah, is more classic GTA than yes, Red Dead really Redemption. It really, yeah. it really it goes back to its old roots. And then this one is an NPC loaded as a cougar, and I hate it. Uh, I, liked, I read that one over your shoulder and enjoyed it very much. <laughs> I thought that was about the divorce. Well, because I'm terrified. <laughs> <laughs> you were, I mean, you were same, such a turtle dove at the beginning, and now you're a cougar. Because yeah. well, also, I'm terrified of cougars. <laughs> like, I'm terrified of cougars the way people are terrified of spiders. Oh. Uh, like I just can't like looking at one makes me nervous and mountain oh. lions and ocelots or Ma- like anything related? ocelots are fine but like ma- wait what do like, I mean bobcat yeah like yeah. a bobcat's fine but like a cougar or a mountain lion makes me nervous is it the size it's I think it's because when I was a kid, I read so many news stories about them eating pets and Big Bear ah. that I developed like a, just a deep seated fear of cougars. So that's fair. When an NPC makes the cougar scream at me and yeah. like pause at me yeah because the thing is when you first see it it runs past you in your periphery yep so you just you just see like a wad of what was once a human screaming but also the cougar is the most consistently annoying predator in that game and it's because it'll jump at you skirt. from nowhere they'll jump at yes. you from nowhere and they can kill you in two bites yeah. and you're like fuck yeah and when you've been playing for like 10 hours and it's late at night and a human jumps out at you from <laughs> Of a rock going, <laughs> going <laughs> yeah. Yeah. suddenly a baby mobile sound hits. And Here's yeah. a question <laughs> Did you kill and skin the human cougar? No, I just ran because you can mm. skin cougars, and I want to see the animation of him. Well, I was yeah. cutting into someone and going, Man, you're you disgusting. Yeah. yeah, you're disgusting. <laughs> the funny thing is, a lot of these NPCs that loaded in it as animals, I couldn't skin. Either I couldn't kill or I couldn't skin. So also all the rules surrounding them were all confused. The rules were confusing because I shot one of the bird men, which is just a guy that flies like a bird. That one I've seen on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. And I shot it, but it won't let you skin it. It can, it'll die though. It'll fall. It'll to the die ground. and fall oh. to the ground. It's also real terrifying to see in your scope. Does it give you the glitch trench coat or something for all these like human? Like, do you get anything out of it? I should have. Outfits no. unlock. You that would vaguely imply it. that it was intentional, and there's no way they meant all It'd this shit. It'd be so to good if you had if you made a trench coat out of human skin 
and you just wore that because of all the glitches. And, and you go great. to the sheriff, and he's like, ah, you found the glitches. <laughs> <laughs> all it resulted in was just unkillable chickens. Like, because the, the, sometimes you would get chickens that mm. just couldn't be murked. Or I wrote this one down, and I'm trying to remember exactly what it looked like, but all of the chairs at the Armadillo Saloon are boars. Like, all, all of the chairs, chairs that people sat in boars. loaded as boars. With people say, yeah. And you could skin those. You could skin the chairs. <laughs> and would it be like, I got chair skin. This will make yeah. good chair <laughs> also, like some i like the idea of a bunch of poker players just kicking their boars over and be like you cheated <laughs> well because it was the four chairs of the poker table yeah, that yeah. were just they, they weren't acting like boars they were just still but still, they were yeah. boars and this was what the i wrote freeze two and then i crossed it out and then three and then i eventually just wrote seven because it just kept freezing whenever i would try to kill a bird uh deers were spawning in houses my yeah. horse flew more than once uh bah, 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 bah. This sounds like a dream come true mm -hmm. this experience yeah i'm trying to find there's one that was especially oh here it is uh this is the one that drove me insane because it happened twice i threw dynamite at a coyote and i fell through the earth <laughs> <laughs> that feels like that one's on you really though because <laughs> like you didn't need to dynamite that coyote you could have just pulled out your pistol it's true <laughs> I, like it was something that I had so and I did it again to see if it, it was a specific again, right? one and it happened both times <laughs> where I lobbed dynamite at coyotes and I'd fall through the goddamn earth that's and a classic <laughs> glitch falling through the earth yeah I got that yeah. in the first arc but, Batman but arc. normally yeah. it doesn't scream at you what have you done with your life <laughs> yeah welcome to the other side Oh, and also just companions that you would have on a companion mission uh, that would just start shouting and then run into the water and drown themselves. So, yeah, this Why sounds is, more fun than the version this, I play. This yeah. sounds like an improvement somehow. Yeah, yeah. Well, because it's a lot of those fun sounding ones, but also the frustration is there's a lot of these that aren't fun sounding. Like my auto aim doesn't work on animals <laughs> anymore. Yeah. Or I looked at a flock of birds and it just crashed. Like these are the entertaining highlights. Yeah. But out the gate, there was stuff that you could not fix unless you restarted. Nigel West Dickens loaded as solid snakes somehow. <laughs> 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 Solid snake oil salesman. Ah. Like, there's some fun stuff in here, but a lot of it was just straight up inconvenient. And if you look at the boards, they're still there from people like, I love this. I can't play this. And I'm trying so hard to work around it. But that's why people almost made a game out of it because it was like, well, at least let's make this fun until they fix it. How long did it take them to generally fix this? Uh, I want to say to get everything smoothed out it took about two to three months because like the first month wow. was where they got a lot of like the creepier glitches out the second month was when a lot of the freeze glitches started happening and the third month and i still see these glitches happen are ones where it was like for example the mission where you had to kill gordo the boar that boar never shows up yeah that that i remember was a problem yeah because I, I and that happened but that goro is there weirdly yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he, he showed is. up he wasn't the flake. But yeah, like shit like yeah. that took a long time to get fixed. Interesting. So that's my rant. That is a rant. Goro with four pistols would be a good Red Dead villain, though. <laughs> what if... Well, he's got four. I mean, it is more than one. <laughs> it's my rant time yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be Goro-centric. My rant is about her rant. That was a non-traditional rant. <laughs> I <laughs> won't stand for it. Should have been saved for game on. So the structure of the show is broken like so much Red Dead Redemption. Like so, yeah, so many first three months of Red Dead. So my rant's basically going to wrap up there, but I just do want to say for the record that I play it on PS Now through the PS4 and I've never had a single glitch. So if you hear this and decide that does sound good, I will play it and I haven't played it before, you might not run into as many entertaining glitches as Vanessa just described. You play Red Dead Undead? No, You'll I hate one. things that break the world. Mm. I also religiously avoid the Call of Duty Undead maps because this is so stupid and weird. Yeah. But I feel like it's a disgrace to World War II veterans who lived and died to save the world from Nazis. I'm like, I don't want to play a game where we make light of it. And there's just like, now there's also zombies. It just seems too frivolous See, a treatment would, of the Holocaust. We had a me. whole thing. Yeah, about in this. the Call of Duty episode. Yeah, we had a whole thing. I this. do think Call of Duty is a franchise that makes millions of dollars off the concept of the Holocaust and therefore has an obligation to consider that the historical mm. importance of the Holocaust, which they don't at all. Like they just think World War II is a fun place to shoot stuff, obviously. And that's my rant about Red Dead Redemption. <laughs> I, I, really, I really appreciate how uh, consistent you are in your moral convictions. That's like, actually that, not at all true in life, but I am about that one about that game. That's yeah. good. <laughs> I mean, I think that's really cool. 
Uh, End of rant. Next checkpoint. Yeah. Game. Yeah. On. Yeah. Western. Please. Edition. Go. Uh, thank you. Uh, hey, so this came out the same year as Fallout New Vegas, I believe. Was it oh. 2010? I'll Google I that, I believe they sir. were. I believe they were. What's your point if that's true? So uh, I just, I, 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 the point being that like, I just like putting games like this in a time period. Like the way that I think of this game is like, there was a time period of like three or four years where everything that Rockstar made was like monstrous men who regretted things. Like that's like all they made. Oh, yeah. Because Grand Theft Auto 4, Nico, you're, when you're shooting dudes, like all he's doing is like, this city, it made me do it. Like he's like really <laughs> bummed out and he's like kind of a racist Italian impression like I just did, right? Wait, you mean the Russian guy? I know he's Russian. Yeah. I'm just joking about how bad my Yep, they both was. came out in 2010. You're right. Yeah. And that was like a, an interesting era of game because like we got really interested in the anti-hero who regrets his life thing. Mm-hmm. And this was the best of that. And then in Grand Theft Auto V... We moved on to no, they're just overtly playfully wicked, and like that's yeah. the that's the deal. Well, I don't want to turn it into a GTA Five episode, but Michael no, feels sure. bad all the time. He's a fucking sad sack. He's sad because he doesn't like the consequences. Yeah, he's Tony Soprano, right? Whereas, he doesn't regret the evil he did. He just isn't. He's like, why am I not happy? Yeah, <laughs> just like why is my kid so shitty? You know, like it's not. He's not like, oh, I shouldn't have done this. Sure, sure, sure. Whereas John Marsden is. Almost Socrates out there on oh, that stagecoach. And the whole you know? time he's like yeah. being suicide squatted by the government. So he's yeah. like, I explicitly don't want to do this. I'm not a character trying to form an empire on blood and shit. I just want to start a farm with my wife. I just want to stop. Pl- like John Marston's goal is to stop playing the game right. <laughs> as soon as possible. Right. Yeah. He owns quite a big farm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Like, like that's a that's a spacious plot of land that it's he's an impressive. built. A real nice cabin in. Do you guys see Hostels? No. Yes. Re- yeah, reminded me of that yeah. opener. Yeah. Uh, I'm just bringing these up because these are interesting cultural markers. Like, we still didn't really have a Native American character that mattered in this game, right? Which we should have probably. Trying to think. Nope. Uh, we only we had a few Mexican NPCs. But There's an unnamed Buffalo soldier who's African-American. <laughs> yeah, I'm no. scrolling through the list of every character, and I think you're right that they're all, they're all basically white or Spanish men, And well, all the main characters. Nastas should... is a minor uh, Native American character who helps John Marston towards the end in the Mexican section, in the Mexico section of the game. Oh, yeah. He is also the only Native American character featured in the game. Yep. He has a mission where he leads you through the canyon. You follow him That's stealthily right. and the shoot reason, dudes in the head. The reason I'm bringing it up is not just because uh, I'm a you know pinko lefty communist type. It's mm. it's because this game is about Western movies. It's a conglomeration of all Western yeah. movies, including set pieces that are like this. That's one's what right. I mainly want to talk about. Yeah. Right, and we don't have any Native Americans in it. Like you can't, it was glaringly weird. You can't do that, man. That's weird that they didn't have it. Uh, right. You have a lot of Mexican even, characters. Well, they're in Mexico. They right. have to have Mexican so, characters yeah. there. You know, like there's been things that have been more right. whitewashed than that. I'm just like, at uh, least they realize. But when you go them, to the town in Mexico, the NPCs should be Mexican. Right. But this was this decade. Sure. You know what I mean, sure, like sure. this was within ten Eight years, years ago, of this time. Yeah. yeah. So like, it's not like we weren't aware of that problem mm-hmm. then. You know, well, Scarlett Johansson voices John Marston, which I thought was a weird joke. <laughs> Boy, in five years, that joke's going to super land. <laughs> if anyone's listening to this five years from now, get a life. <laughs> yeah. Was I rich then? Yeah. Like, just I'd like to know what the future is like. Anyway. Yeah. Tell me if I'm doing better and if I'm not, stay away from me. I don't want to <laughs> know. Uh, but like, I get what you're saying, because it's not even so much like a question of inclusivity. It's a question of just honoring the time period and the stories yes. that are told when we talk about the old west because i love old west stories me too i grew up with a lot of old west stories because that's what latinos do to aggressively assimilate it's bonanza uh just a lot of bonanza and spaghetti westerns Interesting. so it was it was a really big part of my childhood so as italian filmmakers viewed a fictional time in america 
that's how, how you immigrants assimilate into America. Good, assimilated into it. <laughs> like my grandfather wore Wranglers in wild country because that was his like, I'm I'm assimilating and I'm, we're just real behind on what we think it is. That's so Like he still wears cowboy hats and he still has me bring home DVDs of 310 to Yuma and things that he wants to watch. So it was a big immersive part of my childhood. And while I really love the story and it had that score that I want with mm-hmm. an old Western, mm-hmm. that fantastic original score, I felt like... I, there was a lot of characters that I see in a Western that were missing. Yes, it was very sanitized, which is unusual yeah. for a Rockstar game. Yeah. Rockstar tends to be relatively fearless in their satire uh, to a point of being foolish at times, I would argue. I'm I'm pleased that it wasn't satirical in the GTA way. Yeah. Me too. So I did want it, san- I wouldn't even call it sanitized, I'd call it more grounded and elegant than, mm. than the Grand Theft Auto world, but... I agree that it's also sanitized in so Westerns like also my favorite genre behind sci-fi probably, which is why sci-fi Westerns like Cowboy Bebop are the best thing ever. But, uh, love it so much. This, I did. I want to talk about Western Mm. tropes because I feel like what it comes down to is an amalgam of tropes. So the three people that form like, you know, your primary mission givers, I guess. And then also the Bonnie's ranch. Cause she mm-hmm. has like a major subplot. You help save the ranch. And then I think she's burned. actually really important to she this is. game emotionally. And I want to come back to her cause I want to talk about, so her. we have her and her dad. So we have like yeah. the Western trope of the like scrabbling hard bitten farmers who are like trying to carve and hard like, bitten. They, they're like Walmart out there. They have a massive operation. No, but ranch. I mean, her dad is very like severe Western stoic, farmer he's character. an old the daughter pulling through for her pa kind of that thing that part is true yes they're but they they're not struggling mm. at all they are they have be- a lot of resources and it's materials. true that their ranch is big but i think they want you to believe that they're struggling with the number of raider attacks they yeah have, that, you, you defend the, the ranch yes they're still in the old west in that regard but they're really successful ranchers which of course it needs to be said never existed so that's right, right, also right. interesting about mm. this the Wild West period, as it's depicted, is one of the only truly unique American genres of, of storytelling. And one of the reasons it's unique is it's all lies. Like, that's not right. what the Old yeah. West was like. It's all tall tales. It's a very, so it's like in the same way that, you know, we envy or I can envy as an American born storyteller. Like, it's cool to grow up in Scotland or uh, England because they have this long history of Arthurian legends that they can believe is a shared magical universe they all right. know. Ours is the Wild West. Right. I think that's the American fantasy. It, and it, it's the Western genre tries to hit at what's the foundational of the American character. And mm-hmm. it's things like independence, sticking up for what's right, even if you need to use violence to do so and break the law. Um, because I think that harkens back to the Revolutionary War and all that shit. So let, so I just wanted to go through. We got Irish, who is the like... Alcoholic arms dealer. Alcoholic guy in the, that you find in the gutter who's just constantly drinking triple There's X always whiskey. One. He's, Nigel, also, he's also connected to the entire underworld. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know. I think Nigel West Dickens is probably the most like de facto trope that they just take beat for beat. He is just the traveling snake oil salesman. He's also really likable. Yeah, he's like, likable. He's the most likable character in this game, maybe. Him and Marsden. Yeah. Right? Like, love him. Seth is edgy. I don't know that I've the corpse, seen... The corpse guy? So you were saying... Yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> no, I know, but you he's were... He's like mired in guts. You were saying that it's sanitized, and I actually think... It's racially se- sanitized. Yes, it is. But yeah. the Seth character, who's the third pillar of your attack on Williamson's compound, is a trope that I've seen touched on in many Westerns, but I don't think I've ever seen that exact... Like he talks to corpses and that's his affectation. Well, they, they, you, so grave this, robbing is in a, is a Western trope. This game leans more into madness. Yes. Like madness is thematic in it in a way that it is not in traditional in Western In a standard movies. Western film. Yes. It's that Magnificent Seven band of weirdos. Yes. Uh, right. But, but Magnificent but it's Seven, like, they're, none of them are crazy. They're yeah, all yeah. likable They're people all like, yeah, they might with be an eccentric. Honor they're or, outskirts people. Right, but this is a game where like people come out west with visions of like how they're gonna like build a life, and they end up dying in religious ecstasy alone in the desert, and you meet them that way. See, that's that why kind of I stuff's think. Like, Whoa, you know. That's why I think this game does a, such a good job of not being a satire, but a really, really good 
answer to why we love the old west and it doesn't work because every other old west thing it's the american dream it's me setting a forward westward and Mm -hmm. taking something that i think is mine Mm -hmm. and what red dead does is it shows you that version of what we're currently feeling in 2010 which is we tried and it failed and oh god did we fail right well some people succeeded here and a lot of us didn't and those that didn't they suffered really badly well that, that is the narrative yeah. of this story, and there was no way out. It was always going to be decided and faded. That's yeah. the inevitability of it is something that's profound and beautiful. Well, and, I think the core trope that they take that's fundamental to almost every single Western story is the Western genre is a self-defeating genre. Unlike fantasy, I would argue that ninety-five percent of westerns are about the transience of the Wild West period, and including this. Uh, especially because you're, as you point out, Vanessa, your character dies at the end Yep. and like, like Deadwood, they have the monologue about the telephone poles are here. Mm-hmm. Isn't this great progress? Right. And what's his name just says, no, this just means a stranger you've never met from a hundred miles away can bother you with his problems. Uh, and so I think a lot of the West is about considering the crushing development of technology or technology or law or like systems. Mm-hmm. And Often the main character is a sheriff who's come here to clean up the town, which is literally saying, I'm going to take the West as it is, which is the wild West and civilize it. And I'll be a hero for doing that. But at the end of the process, it won't be the wild West anymore. Like that's the end of the Western genre. Uh, And I think this leaned into that more in the way of like making decay really rampant throughout. There's also that weird side mission where you never get to the bottom of it, but someone is stealing and eating children. (laughs) <laughs> and it's just like, you can't solve it. You can't stop it. The The quest line just ends with you knowing that. Uh, so do if, you not find out who it is? I think I you, you find do. out who it is, but I don't think you do anything about it. Don't you kill that guy? Maybe I didn't finish the quest line in the proper way, but... I think you do. In my game, you just find evidence of who it is, and it just goes... You know that yeah, little... You, now you know. And it yeah. goes, <laughs> quest completed. Yeah. Right. Like, you just find a bloody shoe. Yeah. Maybe if I got there faster, the guy would have been there still. I don't know. My point is not just with that example, but I feel like it's interesting for an open world game that they know is going to have a bunch of sequels to still be beholden to the Western idea that, I mean, like you're gen- I was surprised when you go to the big city and you realize, oh, there's a traditional city map in this world. There's cars. Well, it's 1912. When right. This takes yeah. Place. yeah. But I didn't expect there to be a Model T in the right. game towards the end that you can get in and ride around. In. Right. Well, that's what's so interesting is you're right that most Western things are about the decay of the old West, but they place it at a time when the, it wasn't already over. But so it like is 19, rapidly ending. But 1912, it was already over. Mm-hmm. Like that was the choice of this game is like, we want to show the, the death rattle. End. Yes. This is the death rattle yeah. of, you know, the, the dream really. Cause the, the American dream is about having your own property and like, you know, not having the government control it and all that stuff. Right. Like, well that ended with the old West. Like we never lived in that time. Yeah. Uh, and they decided to tell that story from when it was already over, you know? Yeah. And that alone is like, a pretty fatalistic. So there is a satire here. And Marston a, as a, of course, as a true cowboy, right. Cannot survive in this new world by he the end. Can't. Well, I think, but the, the thing is he can because of his skills. Well, he can abilities. because when you play the game, you obviously are a superhero. No, but, but I mean, no, I think thematically Mar- the reason he dies at the end is because he is too much of the old West to thematically for it to be appropriate for him to progress into the next century. I would argue that instead it's that, Marsden has the tools and the cruelty in him to survive. It's that a bigger, badder thing won. Right. Like I think was, we're saying the same thing. The bigger, badder so thing too, has reshaped the world in a way that he can no longer. Right. Keep the up. game is rigged. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, like it's, but it's not, it's not like your time has passed. It's like, no, the forces that actually control things decided that. Right. Cause and he could have survived. That's the core of the wild west story. Many times is, uh, your set of skills has become so amazing. My there's an, one of my favorite Harlan Ellison short stories is called uh, "The End of the Time of Leonard." Yeah, L I E N A R D. It's his last name, and it's a great classic western where he comes and cleans up a town by straight up employing what we would absolutely today call like police brutality. You know, mm, yeah. Um, everyone's so grateful to him for doing that. Twenty years later, he's. Uh, 
like an outcast pariah drunkard that the town is just ashamed of and waiting to die because the town's doing really well now. Right. And there's like investors coming in and they're like, who's your sheriff? And they're like, that dude, didn't he like shoot all those guys at that one time? And they're like, yeah, he's kind of a dinosaur. You know, he doesn't mm. represent the town anymore. And I, it's just a really touching encapsulation of what I think this also is, which is, I agree with you that it's the outside forces, but I think that is the theme is the Wild West may be crazy and death is at every turn, like Blood Meridian or whatever. Mm. But if you're brutal and resourceful, you can survive. But systems are even more powerful than chaos. That, that, I, that I agree with. And that's an interesting point. And I don't, I, you've been waiting, so I don't want to jump in. But. Oh, no, I just wanted to touch on Blood Meridian. Perfect allegory for what this is. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's the only other Western where I felt like a Halloweenish darkness throughout just well, like this. So this brings up uh, like a conversation that Mike, you and I have all the time offline, right? And that's the conversation about a uh, cruel, chaotic world or vengeful uh, mean force. Like, so one of your favorite movies is a serious man, right? I like a lot. Yeah. yeah I don't like a that whole movie. Lot. Um, and we've had a lot of conversations. Why my main thing is it doesn't feel like an accurate commentary on life because it makes life meaner than it really is mm-hmm. and most people who do like it would be like no man that's how life is it's you know it's, it's a movie and i'm like well no it isn't because the all the shitty things that happen to this guy are because a filmmaker made it happen right so now i'm going to apply this idea to red dead redemption can so, i insinuate one sentence of course or you now can. we're going to cover it on coen brothers brothers so i sure. won't give my whole spiel on serious man but i just want to say a it's interesting. I can enjoy movies, and I think most movies I enjoy are not accurate reflections of the real world. I didn't think Serious Man was an accurate reflection of the way the mechanics of the universe work. Sure. I thought it was a fable about an all powerful character, the filmmaker, punishing someone from off screen for no reason, and you have to ask yourself why. It is the story of Job. And I, I agree the story with that. of Job is the same, and I don't think. The story, I personally don't think the story of Job literally happened, or even if it did, sure. I don't think God's message was to take it literally, other than to say, think about the concepts behind this parable. Sure. So I'm just saying, why can't it be a parable? Or it, no, why does it, it have to be it real? I totally agree with okay, that. Okay, okay. That is not the <laughs> position. Maybe I'm representing your position as what I hear other people say about it. So I agree with everything you just said. That's like, yep, that's exactly what that movie is. It's Job. Yeah. Like, totally makes sense to me. Red Dead Redemption poses as in some ways a more uh sophisticated cruel world that isn't being there isn't a malevolent force sort of pressing on all these people it's just the west and civilization does this to you it's just mm-hmm. a hard it place to you be down yeah. right it's just a hard place to be nobody's happy in it nobody's happy in this game mm-hmm. is there a single happy person in it bonnie's the closest bonnie's, and she's alone bonnie's stoic i mean like she's optimistic in the face of struggle yeah. But she's not overjoyed. She, well, <laughs> she's putting a pretty sweet face on it while she's housing a criminal who she needs to marry and to, does she wants to marry well, him. Well, by the end, they just decide to become business partners. They don't have to get married. He's like, remember at the end, he is like, yeah, when I set up my ranch, we'll start trading cattle back and forth and stuff. Yes, that's how it resolves right. in terms of the plot. It's not emotionally... I don't think we're... I think we're supposed to feel bad for Bonnie. I think Bonnie I do. is like... Yeah, I just I think like we're supposed that, to. I just like that there wasn't a wedding in the, in the game where you marry Bonnie. I yeah, I, I don't think he should have ended up with Bonnie. I think Bonnie is too good for him, honestly. But sure. like, yeah. you know. But so, why am I bringing this up? So, Nigel West Dickens is happy, or would you argue that he's just pretending to be happy all the time for his he's, job? He's got a lot of gripes, and he's in a lot of trouble. But maybe he's delusional. I'm just saying he's always smiling and talking happily. <laughs> it's just his okay. delivery. Uh, the guy that's in love with his horse is happy when you return the horse for him to fuck. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me. I guess let me let me go about this a different way. Yeah. Do you think that Red Dead Redemption cap- captures a world that's that in any way really resembles ours? Yes. Okay. I don't. No. I don't. I don't at all, but I want to hear that argument. I see it as that just because I, I think it's like, I don't think it's 1000% exactly that resembles it, but I think it's a magnifying glass on a world facing the consequences of 
the boot they threw down thinking that this was going to lead to whatever they thought their destiny or American dream was. I think the death of hope, you mean? So like a, like misplaced hope, not even just the death of, not even just the death of hope, but a lot of the people that are living out terrible consequences right now are people that did terrible things. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's like that part after the happily ever after where we're like, Oh, none of those ends are going to wrapped up, going to get wrapped up. This is how it wrapped up. It's one of those cases where it's like, well, yeah, this person uh, saved the small town, but what about the people that are going to come back and get vengeance? This is the other half of that story that we're seeing. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it reflects to that now in terms of like we're we're a society that's looking at what we built turning against us. Hmm. Is Red Dead to a prequel? I think it, it is. I think be. it's absolutely a prequel. It has so that, you're not going really to you're not going to play as his son. Because his son is going to be living at a time where Western tropes become less and less relevant, given like the time they said it. I in. think you're going to play as Dutch. Well, not just that. Oh, are, I was wondering if you'll play as John when he was in the gang and do all the gang stuff. I think, but within Bill Williamson's gang, right? Like you're playing through. So it's interesting. Vanessa's right, and I never thought about it this way. This is almost Red Dead Redemption as one is almost. The third, it feels like the third installment of a trilogy of Western movies. Yeah, because the thing is, they even make a point to tell you at the end, Reyes goes corrupt. They, why would they tell you that unless he's the next antagonist? Mm. This was a guy that you put your hope in to run a town and make it better, and he did. Right. And then he get, he goes corrupt. Why would they tell you that unless he's your new antagonist? Oh, yeah. I think they're telling you that because they want you to think every system of power ultimately corrupts, mm -hmm. and that's the point. It's just another small parable. Uh -huh. Number one was set in 1911. Number two is set in 1899, and you still play as John Marston, I think. No, hold on. It could be. I mean, I think people would rather play as John Marston. I feel like video games way more than movies are beholden to like, shit, people love being John Marston. We better keep him. I mean, I want to talk about John Marston in, in, in a second here, but... Oh, right, because one of the main Western tropes is the outlaw sheriff, so we got to talk about, yeah, does he well, hit the tropes? And, and does he not? Does he evolve what, the tropes? Yeah, specifically, like, what's the impact of John Marston on the game? I want to finish up this line of inquiry really quick. So, to me, this world is not real because it chooses to make only people who who crush other people successful and only people who have noble hopes or don't want to crush people plus some other maniacs mm. unsuccessful and even though i think it like more appeals to how we feel the world is than how it really is mm. like it's like cruel in a way that's not how it is it's cruel but it's also it's all of the bloodbath that's set up to lift up someone else to do better than you did yes because the thing is how does it end it doesn't end with john getting justice because at the same time john fucked up in his life a lot mm -hmm. it ends with his son having the tools to finish what he couldn't and possibly start a better life and i think the death rattle of the old west is such a good way of setting it up because it's basically all right i fucked up but let's see if i can push you to do better than what i did right and I think that's why it's reflective because it's like we fucked up. Now I'm trying to push someone under me to do better than what I did. I always wonder with Rockstar if it's intentional because we talked a lot in the GTA episode about how their satire is a little infantile where they're just trying mm -hmm. to push a button that feels the shape of satire and it doesn't they don't necessarily know, have like a big statement. So part of me also wonders if and I don't know if this builds the conversation, but I feel like it could easily also be because now I now that you guys bring it up. It is darker than most than your standard Western vibe. Much darker. Mm. And I see that now because I'm remembering, oh, yeah, there is a bestiality mission. There's a cannibalism mission. There's a blah, blah, blah. I'm just wondering if it is just a result of the tone being halfway between Western and what GTA normally does. Like, ah. I'm wondering if GTA's people or like Rockstar people sat down and were tasked with making a Western and they're like, well, let's do what we do, which is like really gross, horrible stuff happening. And meld that with Western. I think what they do is nihilism. I think I think Rock, Rockstar is a vendor of open world, beautifully polished, beautifully executed, funny nihilism. But the world That's is always rotten to the core and hollow always. inside. Yeah, every mm -hmm. single Rockstar game is a rotten nihilistic world. That's what they like, and I fundamentally think 
that is not the only way to see the world. Yeah. And I don't agree with Agreed, it. Agreed, but I, as I said about Serious Man, like, I can still take things from a Me game too. set in a world that's not real. This yeah. is easily in my top five favorite games. Yeah. For meaning. For emotional yeah, yeah, meaning. Yeah, I yeah, love yeah. it for that. You uh, just like, would push back on someone saying, yep, that's what life is like. And, it, and I hear that shit everywhere. Like, man, it really gets it life. No, it doesn't. Like, that's the same fucking cowards. Like, no, you're blowing doesn't. up your own struggles yeah. if you think they're as severe as John Marston's. And also, <laughs> John Marston's struggles weren't as severe as John Marston's struggles either. It's like, you know, you're just trying to whittle life down to a that. specific. <laughs> I mean, that like everybody summarizes their life mm-hmm. through a couple of key narrative events that meant something emotionally to right. them, mm-hmm. right? And says, this is all that it was. But it wasn't just that, it yeah. was other things too, you know, like, and we may be able to pick in our time what the narrative is, but that doesn't mean that we're right. So you're referring to the concept that Marston has simplified his background to, yes, I was bad, but I'm good now. Right. So and I'm like, going to kill a haunted, this guy. I'm a haunted, doomed man. And that's not my fault. Right. It's because of bad circumstances. Right. And yeah. we're supposed to believe him. Well, we, we believe him. We you know, want like, him to succeed. He's definitely a lot more likable than uh, Travis or whatever from GTA Trevor, 5. you hate Trevor. Trevor. I like Trevor. Are like, you supposed to like Trevor? I like Trevor. <laughs> I think you are supposed to like him, yeah. Like likable, like, like, like root for him no, to have no, what like, he wants happen. No, like him in the sense that he's a he's like interesting evil Kramer. You like know how I mean? we were like, talking yeah. about Always Sunny before the show. Correct. You don't like anyone, but you like all of them. Correct. Uh, I just wanted to say, yeah. it's not Dutch. Two, the main character is going to be Arthur Morgan, and this actually mildly disappoints hmm. me. It is a prequel. It is about the actual missions that the Vanderland gang, the Dutch leads pulled off. Mm -hmm. But you are just another heretofore unnamed guy who just like John Marston halfway through the game decides you guys are too cruel. I want out of the gang and you have to kill a bunch of people to get out of the gang. Uh, That sounds not that interesting to me. Of course I'm going to pre-order this game and play it opening day. Of course the story could be amazing. I'm just saying that's mildly disappointing to me. Rockstar gets a free pass from me until they make a bad game. I buy their games until they make a bad one. They have not made a bad one in have 10 to, years. I well Or 20 years, maybe. I time. have genuinely not enjoyed playing any GTA game. I play them as an obligation because they're so societally important. Fine. So I would, I would say I have to give them a pass every time they release a GTA game. Fine. And that brings me to a question about this game. Sure. One of the things I hate about GTA is I don't care about cars. Mm-hmm. I don't like driving in real life. Yeah. I don't like simulated driving games. Oh, I hate driving it. Driving is a chore, so I don't know why anyone would like a game that includes any amount of, now pretend like you're driving. Isn't that fun, driving? No, no. But riding a horse, which is essentially the same, did not bother me at all. Why? Can someone explain why I liked riding a horse in yep, a game? I yeah. can. Go. You ready? Uh, because this is more of a life pet peeve you've put on the game than a thing that's intrinsically true. Well, not just Wait, that. Wait, what is? That I hate cars? Yes. Okay. I don't think it's just that either. Because in Grand Theft Auto, you don't develop an emotional connection to your car that actually makes it... Like, there's a loyalty meter with your horse in Red Dead that you don't have in Grand Theft Auto. In okay. Grand Theft Auto, you could just junk something and it doesn't fucking matter. But in Red Dead, the longer you spend with your horse and the more time you spend with it and the more loyal it is to mm-hmm. you, you're rewarded for that. Counterpoint, you buy a deed to the four cool horses. There's four good horses. Mm-hmm. In Red mm-hmm. Dead. They're the good ones. The rest of them aren't as good. And then you can spawn that horse anytime you want, and you go faster. Mm-hmm. So that's what I did. It's that's like, what I did, too. Counter counterpoint. Yeah. Or also a counterpoint, I guess. Also in GTA and in life, I do know people who form emotional attachments to cars, meaning I never did it, because mm-hmm. why would I? Because I don't give a shit about this kind of thing. But I do know GTA players who pimp out their car at Los Santos Customs, color it in a particular way so they know that's their car save it only yeah. use that car yeah. mm-hmm. and if it gets destroyed they are really upset they lost that car whereas i don't i just steal whatever car spawns near me i, oh, I watched a breakup slid. over that oh really yeah i watched a, a friend of mine uh his his girlfriend was over and uh he went to the bathroom and he had his car out and she was just like i'm gonna play around a little bit and uh she drove it into what is supposed to be the la river in the game and they okay. had an argument and then i quietly exited and then they weren't together anymore so you're <laughs> pretty God. sure it's about the fact that she destroyed his car i think that might I be more fe- emblematic i feel like it was a catalyst yeah for yeah. It, was, it was the thing that Must pushed it already up had issues. but like <laughs> The, how attached he was where it was like this was the one that i built uh yeah. i was like just 
Didn't you say the- build another one with your billions of dollars? Yeah, that you get for literally nothing. <laughs> In Grand well, Theft Auto, like stop being a maniac. If you're interested in buying properties, it's actually incredibly hard to get money in Grand Theft Auto Five for enough a little while to buy all the properties until you do the stock market. Well, anyway, I don't want to get. Yeah, I, I, I believe fundamentally in your case that it's your despising of driving in general that is fueling the frustration with Grand Theft Auto Five. I like driving in I like, real life as well. Well, I have a car I like. That's a big part of it, man. I uh, like my car, but driving is just. Like, if I could teleport, I always would. <laughs> well, who wouldn't? Of course, if there's a teleportation Then device. you admit that cars only exist because of a failure. Like, we don't need them to exist. F- they just serve a function. Well, we need them to exist because we need the service they provide to exist now. Uh, if right. there was a portal here that led me anywhere, I wouldn't have a car. And exactly. I, and, I didn't but understand. it doesn't make it bad, you know? It yeah, because like, I didn't understand liking your car until I got rid of the worst car in the universe and got a car that I liked. And now it's like, oh, and driving's kind of fun. And now like, I'm offering yeah. people rides. Exactly. Because I just want to be exactly. in it. I, I bought a car back when I was working the courts years ago. Mm-hmm. And it was a truck, and I had to like lug gear around for basically six years in that car because yeah. that's what I had in film school. And the first few years it cracked, and then it got wrecked by a drunk driver. And I bought a car. Yeah, sorry about that, by the way. It's okay. Uh, I was drinking a lot that night. Yeah, <laughs> yes, you were. And that's how y'all met. Uh, and I hate driving, so I crashed into you to I, stop the ride. I bought a car that didn't have the ability to lug gear around, and my life was better, <laughs> instantly better. You know, I lugged all this audio gear here in my normal little car. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You'll never. We get should be talking about Red Dead Redemption. <laughs> I'm just saying, don't hit my car. With but a I'm. Drunk I'm. I'll and just say. More fun. Bottom line, I'm a fast travel guy. In a fake sure. world that's already fake, I, I would like the ability always to just teleport. And even though I didn't, the horse rides didn't bug me as much as the car rides in Grand Theft Auto do. I would still fast travel if Rockstar would let me. And it fucking bothers me that Rockstar. They do has let you. Very limited. You have to get very far in the game and get money and buy a fast travel point. Mm. I like games where the they go from from jump anywhere you visited. Just you go back. Like travel. there's yeah. no backtracking because sure. why would you? Because you're trying to get through the game. I agree. <laughs> I agree with that. Like uh, in theory, y- no. I un- it makes me frustrated in Destiny too. You can't delete stuff the way you can in Fallout. It's like why mm. you know just stuff like that. I get it. Just hold triangle and right. It just breaks. like let me do yeah. it. You yeah. know, like let me like just stuff like that. Uh, I totally agree with you. I do think at least for a couple hours in this game, I liked riding around on my horse and went to all the missions and did the riding around even the second and third place because the environment's so pretty right well i think we should because it's because being out in the open air and like open air in quotes uh and but like I, looking around and like experiencing that is amazing it's i great. think the open air is exactly right because i think it's important to mention one of the best things about the game environment in this game is that and actually gta 5 did top it and i do appreciate that rockstar cares about this Rockstar continuously puts so much effort into their skybox. They really do. The sky in Red Dead Redemption is so alive and animated and has so many different modes it can go through that you enjoy looking at the sky, which you don't think about it, but it takes up two thirds of the screen most of the time. Right. And GTA 5, I have to give it to. Like they really, the LA sunsets in GTA 5 will be just as beautiful as a real LA sunset. Yeah, they do. And uh, I think that is probably an underrated aspect is the red dead redemption sky is just fucking killer well i red dead redemption was the first game i remember feeling like the game world was actually alive yes because they cleverly for the most part hid like spawn points for animals and stuff so deep in the brush and stuff yeah yeah, so it really felt like everywhere you went like oh there's an armadillo oh there's a you know town called armadillo yeah (laughs) (laughs) right there's a sheriff that's shaped like a man what's going on (laughs) armadillo is where i saw the most glitches early on yeah yeah They're just uh, just armored rats. I want to compare briefly to the New Vegas environment just because we recorded that today too. And Adam, you're saying how dull that environment was to you and how much blank space that all looks the same. Yes. I do think Red Dead has a lot of desert chaparral areas that look monotonous. What keeps it from falling into that trap for you? Uh, Interesting spawns. Because there's also very few major places if you know what i mean yeah but you get these like these just like gorgeous vistas and like you get that occasional like just the occasional music from a a mariachi band Mm -hmm. or just like stuff like it it just is a little more robust feeling when you're doing it whereas fallout 
it doesn't look as good in, at any point. It never looks as good as Red Dead Redemption did. That's true, but every town has more buildings than 100%. Red Dead Redemption. It was interesting to me that I did feel sometimes like there was a town you ride into and you finally get there, and I'm right. like, there's only two things to do here. Yes. Play poker or talk to this dude. Yes. Like, this is barely a town. You're all, <laughs> but you're also getting there faster. Yeah. Like Fallout, you can't sprint. That's another thing I wish I'd said in the episode. Like, you can't fucking sprint. Oh, I even sprint. wrote that down. Four, you can. They fixed I that. I know. Because yeah. yeah. it was like, why can't you sprint? Yes, what agreed. the fuck? You know, you just want to feel like you can get there faster. Yep. Even if you can't. Even if he uses action points. I agree. Right. Yeah. You know, exactly. Well, one thing I will say is, and I know this is bringing something else into it, but it's also more interesting because when you play Red Dead Undead, the vastness becomes a really cool scavenger hunt for really interesting spawns. Like the Four Horsemen yep. Uh, yep. mini game. I love that. I love that I could be roaming for a while and then all of a sudden something just spawns onto my screen and yeah. it's crazy looking and I want to chase it. <laughs> and I don't like have that. Like the snake that. man. Like the snake Although man. Although that's, Should've you said you, that's want, a glitch. you ran away from the glitches out of fear. Why do you? Why are you attracted the to the monsters that are intentional? Because they're gorgeous. Have you uh, seen the four horsemen in red? No. Uh, they're, they're really cool. They're really Really, really cool. Just a flaming horse coming out of nowhere in your See, peripheral. I love this is a weird affectation that's particular to me and I shouldn't have. But just like the Call of Duty thing, what that I will never even look at a video of that because then it's not a real Western. And it's important to me that Red Dead Redemption <laughs> is a real Western. I don't want there to be magic in this world at all. That Would it bothers have me. Been better if the intro of Red Dead Redemption was just him trying ayahuasca for the first time. That's how Far Cry deals with it. Like in the primal one, you drink drugs and they're like, that's why there's magic. It could have worked. Yeah. Yeah. That's, if that's, he had hallucinatory interludes, I could be down with that. Yeah. Yeah. But I also like that. I don't mind that. When did that come out? Like three, four months after the game came out? Maybe even longer? Like six months? I want to say about six months. And like at that point, you've played the game. Like yeah. There, I, there were not that many people I can't imagine who knew about Red Dead Redemption and didn't buy it. Like but it if, was like everywhere. But I, I guess I don't know. I guess I just do care about continuity to some degree. Sure. Like if a Star Wars movie came out where they said, the force doesn't exist. That was a lie. Jedis are actually these little toad monsters with no powers. But that's what a Jedi is. I'd be like, you're ruining retroactively. But, but they're not. My a- question comes in is if you like Cowboy Bebop mm-hmm. and you, you like the genre of sci-fi and fantasy meeting Western, it's mm-hmm. not too far of a reach to be like something crazy is happening in this western town but not when you've already sunk 120 hours into this is a normal western world i'm just saying i think your rules are a little uh i i I, they seem consistent initially but then after a while it's like but but really are they because like why couldn't a curse be there in this world this whole time and didn't get triggered it would bug dude stole a tomb oh because it would bug it can be, but like you said, right. you can still say, but that's dumb. Like I would say, yeah, yeah you can, but it's bad storytelling. Mm-hmm. It would be exactly like a movie that was a Western. And then the last scene, they, they kill the evil cowboy with an amulet that they find in the last <laughs> 10 minutes of the movie. That would make that would bother me. <laughs> I, I'm just saying, I just going to just counterpoint. You love big MT in, uh, in fallout new Vegas. Mm-hmm. And that is a huge right turn worldwide. And oh, really? Yeah. I find that it dovetails perfectly with the rest of the world. It even explains how a bunch of the creatures in the wasteland came to be. It does, but that doesn't make it a totally different vibe and place than everything else in that game. But vibe is not world breaking. I can believe that in a serious world, over here in a different area that's run entirely by crazy robots who are malfunctioning in their brains, mm-hmm. the vibe is very different than humans trying to survive in the Vegas encampment. Whereas I can't believe that John Marston could calmly from everything I know about him, just see a zombie and go, all right, I guess there's zombies. Let's fight zombies. Like I assume they don't do any world building where he's like, how can there be? Does this there mean there's life after world. death? There's a little bit of it. Well, not like life after not death, that. but, but it's it really raises co- all these like religious questions that I feel like you'd have to address. There is a lot of religious questions anything. that are addressed. Okay. Yeah, like would, there's a lot of to. NPCs that are talking yeah. about is this God's punishment for yeah. stealing land? Or so good. there's a lot of like questions from the other characters that you interact with that are trying to figure out like is this a punishment from God? Is this a curse? Is this? They're trying to figure out where it comes from, which is really interesting, and I love it because it's literally somebody stepping in from one genre into another yeah. where we go from western movie and then we waltz on into b zombie movie totally and it's it's I don't like b zombie movies <laughs> like i was already burnt like i'll give it 
I was already burnt out on the zombie concept by the time it came out because we really like went too far into it for a while. But it still works for me because it's just a waltz from one kind of pulp into another kind of pulp. I thought it was just fun. Uh, it it that, would probably also the real truth. Like you got me or you pushed me into a corner and I'll admit I would totally be fine with it if I thought I would find it fun. But I also only like single player story driven campaign games where a story unfolds. Right. So things where it goes fight zombies that rounds over fight zombies again that rounds over fight zombies again See, is inherently boring. to and me. And I hate that, which is why I like Red Dead Undead, because there's still story to it. Because I hate you the idea of waiting zombies. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Are there other real people in the world with me? Yes. Yeah. I'm already out. Yeah. Like, I don't like playing multiplayer, well, period. Well, not other real people in the world. It's not like... No, I mean, are there you're... other players, and we're on a team, and we're fighting no, zombies? No, 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 nothing so like that. So it's not like the Call of Duty on Undead. It's not a horde mode. It's not at all like a horde game, because oh. I hate zombie horde games. It's like, ugh, it's undead, and I get to shoot like 300 of them. I thought it was. It's, it's definitely... It's not like a horde game. It's you playing alone, but you're trying to figure out how this happened, and you're going from town to town trying to help them get control of the situation and understand what's happening. Oh, yes. then it sounds great, and I don't care that there's zombies. I, was gonna, I knew it. I knew it. Uh, so, well, so it, it comes I will down say to my bias against multi, multiplayer online games. That's what there's it no comes multiplayer down to. I get, I, yeah. I, there is a multiplayer facet to Red Dead, yes. Yes. But, but not here. Uh, or at least that's not. You can play this game as a campaign. How weird was the multiplayer where you just draw against people over and over, I like the that. fifteen didn't, second didn't mini like game? I, yeah. The 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 multiplayer in all of Rockstar's games for me becomes real try hard. I know people like GTA Online a lot. I know, but it to me it's always like, oh man, I run into some guy who's like fucking amazing at this, and I can't compete, mm. and they ruin it for you. Yeah, like it's worse than Call of Duty mm-hmm. to me. Uh, I just want to say one last thing about Undead. That is that I think the gameplay loops are worse in Undead Nightmare than the regular game. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not as fun. The it's, loop defined as going, yeah, killing an area and getting loot and then going uh, to the next place? It's, yeah. I think What's worse about them? I, I, remember, I remember there being like fist fights or fights with torches that I thought were a little cumbersome. Mm. Um, like they tried a few things and they didn't all work And for I just you. didn't think they were as good. Sure. Yeah. I'd rather do guns. Like but the DLC is the place to be like, let's play around with whether yes. Torch can be a weapon. Maybe we'll include it in two. Yeah. Undoubtedly. <laughs> Undoubtedly. There's, yeah. Okay. Right. My biggest bummer about Red Dead, Red, uh, Undead, is other than the fact that PlayStation Now hasn't really done much to upkeep it to where you can finish it. <laughs> I'm still so resentful of that. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, if there's no ending, I'm back out. It like that troubles me. <laughs> as long as you don't run into that specific issue, you'll be fine. Uh, but some users have been experiencing. Uh, it was one that I brought up earlier, where you need to get like eight of a certain undead in town, and then turn in that mission to someone that was essentially like I don't remember if it was like a bartender or someone that was just kind of like, "Can you clear this area for me so we can proceed?" You can't turn it into him. Mm-hmm. And and a, is it a bottleneck? Like, is that a main story quest that you cannot progress if you don't finish? It's or can you skip it? It's a bottleneck. Okay. It's but a it it's a main story, everybody. and it's, it doesn't happen for everybody. But there's a small faction, and yeah. I'm one of them oh, that man. experiences it, which is such a bummer. Because when I ask, like, how do I fix this? They're like, the only thing is restart. S- just restart the game, uh, and and it might not happen and, that time, and it might not happen that time. <laughs> and I'm already so far no in because you do get invested into it. Right. In the same way that you do with Red Dead Redemption, because they're people that uh, they they need your help and they're yeah. they're relieved to see you and you're trying to figure out how this is happening and it adds a really cool mystical element, but yeah. it's still the bones of what makes the game work. And I want to fucking finish it. Y- your complaints are totally valid. There, uh, also Undead reinforces the glaring deficit of Native American characters. Yep. Sure. Big time. The, just the narrative of it alone yep. reinforces that. All right. Enough about the expansion. Yeah. I got to yep. I gotta take us past our last checkpoint now. Okay. And go into keep or delete mm. slash final thoughts. If, yeah. any, if anyone, you know, you can still squeeze some, I'm some going sass to. in if you need to. I'm going to because there was one thing I didn't get to talk yeah. about. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I think John Marsden is in the running for best video game protagonist ever. Yep. Um, is he in the running for best Western protagonist across all media? I'm I don't know the answer. Him. I'm asking to put you on the spot. I'm going to give it to him. Okay, no, cool. no, no, no. Clint Eastwood's character in Good, Bad, and the Ugly. That, We're in the whole trilogy. That's yeah. pretty important. Um, 
It's in there. It's, okay. a, it's somewhere in the top ten. Just wondering. Maybe. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's he's very, a good stoic sheriff type. It's one, he's <laughs> a he's man. a lament. He's a he's a Jeremiah character. He's you know unforgiving. I mean? like he's a, yeah. yeah, he's yeah. a sad lamenting man, but he's not unforgiving because he's not stoic. Like he'll gripe at you. Yeah, he does bitch a lot when he's right. And I like places. that. <laughs> I'm okay with it. Yeah, like, he's a whiny yeah. little guy. I like it. Uh, yeah, and and we all forget the. I literally got distracted a by a squirrel. I'm so it's okay. There's squirrels in my yard. <laughs> I can uh, look at a squirrel and talk. It's, I didn't know that that was tough That's why you're the you. host. Yeah. Just like that. Uh, I, we all forget that the first time you saw John Marsden's face in 2010, because you know, they've done a lot of stuff since, but it was like a pretty pow- powerful moment in video games because it was done so, it was rendered so realistically, but also he was fucked up. He's like scarred. And yeah. Like, Especially when you care, compare it to Red Dead Revolver, which if you play now, almost feels like a kiddie pool tech demo working its right. way up to Red Dead Redemption. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Marsden, John Marsden represents a huge step forward in every way for, yeah. for video games. Definitely keep in this game. Who would win, Kratos or John Marsden? John Marsden. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean in a physical altercation. Well, Kratos, but fuck Kratos. All right. <laughs> I said it. I would fuck Kratos. I mean... You should. Specifically, like, this new... Nordic Kratos, uh, but that man works with a beard. Um, but I, I love this game. I love the idea of a Western. I love this Western hero because usually I get a lot of stoic and I don't always want that. I want someone that responds to and is annoyed by their mm-hmm. environment or sad uh, when stuff happens to them. That's s- bad. Yeah. yeah. I want somebody to actually react like a person. And it's insane that I, I, it took so long. It took a video game to do what filmmaking hadn't done for me for a main character in yeah. a Western. And the fact that they did address a lot of the glitchiness of the game, that it's so replayable and it has probably my top three video game scores. I'm keeping it. It's it's beautiful. I think you haven't seen the Western Maverick with uh, Mel Gibson. We it, just covered on a frame yet, right? So oh, did, yes, okay. I have recently. No, I'm saying you haven't. Oh. I have like, That's a that's a a western with a protagonist who gripes a lot and also like reacts emotionally to. Written by uh, William Goldman, who also wrote uh, Princess, Princess Bride. Bride screenplay. It's very silly. So it's like a western with the cheerful poppy tone of Princess Bride. It's yeah. it's odd. It's really fun. It's also Mel Gibson, though, so you got to decide how you feel about but that. But it is one of the few Mel Gibsons I can still go back and watch and be like, it's fun, though. It's good. I liked it. Uh, I'm going to keep I it. it I just want to say <laughs> the only thing I want to say, because all I really need to say, I've already said on Game On, but I will keep it. And I'll also say that, uh, I, Vanessa, when you pointed that out, I was trying to think of Westerns that don't use a monolithic character. And I think Adam was implying correctly that... Like even Unforgiven, which totally undermines what Spaghetti Westerns were doing. Beautiful movie. He's still just a symbol of a an ethos in the way the Western characters usually are. He's just a different ethos than he used to play. Mm-hmm. Whereas in this, Marston is a real quote unquote character with like layers that you slowly learn about. And I would say the only Western thing I can think of that also does that is Deadwood. So I just can't heap enough praise on Which Deadwood. Which is also very theatrical. But because it's a show, yeah. they have to. You have yeah. to get to know the people for real. Right. And and they and they nail it. I know everyone in that town. I fucking love them. <laughs> I mean, Deadwood is a, is feels like theater. It is theater, essentially. It's Shakespearean language yeah. almost. But yeah. also it's blocked and feels like theater yeah. plays. EB um, will deliver a monologue to a horse in the street. Uh, that like would never happen in real life, but you love it. Yeah. I, would, I would say the character of Bill from Unforgiven is the closest thing I can think of in a Western to John Marston. Agreed. In that Bill, that's the Gene Hackman he character. He has two or three facets at least. He's, yeah. Well, he's complicated. He's like kind of a piece of shit, but he's on the right side of the law. Yeah. And he's he's a baby about things and he's like incompetent in some ways and like he's a person. Yeah. He's a human in this job, you know? Anyway. Yeah. Man Who Shot Liberty Valance is like... They feel like real characters, but they're not. Again, they're just one represents law and order and one represents old style law and order. The Western is a two dimensional parable. Usually, which, almost which, always, yeah. Which is why it's more fun to see it subverted and played with as tropes. Yeah. Because we like the tropes. And that's why I think it's a testament A, it's high praise for me to compare something to Deadwood, and B, I think it's a testament to the John Marston's actual, like, his ability to come off the screen and into your heart. Right. That I'm like, Oh, two is not going to be John Marston. 
that I kind of him. sad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's amazing. Uh, it, this, oh, man. I'm sure he'll like, show up because he was in Dutch's gang. He's going to be there. Yeah. He's got to be. I, this just, you just stumbled on something really interesting because, like, there's only a few two dimensional genres in American entertainment, and Western's definitely one. Rom coms are another. And those are the ones that so you see. So is sci fi. I think some sci-fi. I like, I think I like stories that take place on the liminal archetypal fable level more than I like stories with real well-drawn characters well, because personally. Those are the ones where you're not expecting specific feelings. You're expecting tropes and, and specific th- thoughts and why intellectual we, thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why we can do reinventions and crossovers and they work like Shaun of the dead is a zombie crossover rom- rom-com basically, mm-hmm. you know, or cause un- it's two flat genres so they can blend. So yeah. you can yeah. do. St- yeah, exactly. Whereas like, it's kind of harder to do that with horror. Because you're expecting specific feelings. Or if you combine, like, uh, what was it, Sense and Sensibility and Zombies, you have to immediately give up that the first thing you're doing yeah. is demolishing the true tone of Sense and Sensibility. You're not going to get that, Because right. now it's a comedy. Because right. you can't yeah. make a layered drama merge with a zombie thing and right. have it stay serious. <laughs> yeah. Right. Can we get to do a podcast on Sense and Sensibility? That well, movie? I fucking love that. I movie. think we need to do a podcast where we talk about our Western noir comedy adaptation of heart of darkness screenplay that we're working on <laughs> you want to do a podcast about it i just want to get it going again <laughs> this is how you bring it up <laughs> i think it's yeah we haven't worked on it i in a while. think yeah. about that world all the time man and i think that movie could be something really special and this is for off mic <laughs> sorry no yeah we, we, this is uh we we should talk about that yeah. i just want you to know that even though we haven't worked on it in like six months i think about it all the time okay and in the cool. same way that a good game draws me in i think we have something there i think that world is awesome i do enjoy what we've done with that yeah we're adapting heart of darkness into a western and we've Hell been yeah. tinkering with it for like but it will be years. shot in film noir style because right. it's about an east coast film noir guy who has to come to the west to find his western style brother i yeah. mean yeah I think it's gonna be cool it's real good <laughs> it's so good <laughs> it's, we're excited so stay it. tuned for that if you have money, executive produce it. We are seeking investors. Hand us fifty million now, and we'll give you points on the package. You know what I mean? Like yeah. uh, we'll it could be a, a twenty million dollar print. Now you have a train chase in it right now, bro. We have a train chase. Well, in it. are you trying to get out of this? <laughs> what? No, you have a. We have a scene where we where he's wandering on the roof of a train. How can you do a western without that, though? I think you can. Uh, <laughs> that's the that's a ten million dollar idea, so that may not last. Is the only thing. There's gonna. I don't, we, this we should just do Mike and Adam discuss their writing problems. The I podcast. was thinking <laughs> the whole movie could take place on top of the train, <laughs> and that would save money. I also like that idea. I think we got <laughs> something there. All right, we're out of time. Thank you so much, Vanessa. Thank you for having me. Where Thanks can people find you online? Uh, you can find me on VanessaGritton.com, and you can also listen to me on the Brouhaha podcast. What's going on with that podcast where you see something for the first time? What's the name of that one? Uh, that one's on some hiatus, but it was called Take a Walk. Mm. Um, I'm still, I had a lot of irons in the fire, and that was one of the ones where I had to... Burned out. P- burned out for a little bit uh but there's old episodes of it that y'all can listen to and i really loved it it's just it, it's it's a lot of production that goes mm-hmm. into it because i have to actually go to the place with people and then schedule recording time yep. afterwards and uh it's la traffic work. made that podcast so hard but really rewarding there's See, a lot of really great episodes well if you bring it back we're currently sitting less than a half mile from the museum of jurassic technology and i want to go so bad we gotta amazing. go do that just yeah. for as humans it's great debate our screenplay yeah. apparently yeah. yeah i don't i thought of it as a collaboration not a debate but that's <laughs> revealing you know i really play the asshole character real well do you think this of this podcast. podcast as a debate as a fight isn't that what we said when we started the conceptually when we were doing our draft yeah, yeah. boards and our dreamscapes now we're now we're pulling back the curtain yeah we actually don't argue this much in real life but Never. we decided <laughs> it makes the show more interesting to be contentious yeah yeah we our first version of this was intended to be a battle well it was called boss fight final bosses final bosses and the end segment was boss fight where we fought it but (sighs) cracks owned all the rights to that concept so we had to come up with a new name we came up with one upsmanship also also fine except that one of our recent great guests brian brushwood ceo of modern rogue 
said, uh, it's, I really like one upsmanship. Did you know I used to do a video game analysis podcast called one upsmanship? And I was like, God damn it. I searched hard, but I, I was like, when I, when we thought of the name, I was like, someone's used it, but I can't find it. Get a rope. That's happened to me before. I used to have a podcast where I'd interview adult film stars about the first time they did a scene called performance anxiety. And there was a show called performance anxiety at the exact same time. With same or different concept. Uh, it was in a sex shop. So it was like similar, similar concepts yeah. and it was way mm. bigger than my thing. And which is fine. That went downhill real quickly. I did one where I was just confessing to a lot of different crimes I'd committed and I called it my favorite murder, but nobody fucking finds <laughs> that one. You, know? you are still suing them for part of the proceeds. So. You'll see. We're way over time. Yeah, Bye, yeah. everyone. Bye. Bye.